Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today, former Tennessee Governor Winfield Dunn. Governor, as you look back now almost a half a century later, what do you see as your top accomplishments while you were in office? That's a good question. And I, I often immediately say uh, the kindergarten program yeah. because that was such a vitally needed thing for Tennessee to have. But as I look now, I see the Department of Economic and Community Development, which our state has and which I struggled for us to have. And you had, you had a big the, fight to make that happen. Uh, I mean, you, today it, it seems to be a given in our state, but it was, it was very politically controversial when you it did it. It was terribly controversial. So anyway, that's another one. So kindergarten, economic development, highway development, our program had come to almost a complete halt. And we came in created some new financing mechanisms, and we got it going. It's interesting that you'd bring up roads because that's the current fight up on the Hill right now. Governor Haslam and many in the legislature are having a discussion, in some cases an argument, about what they, everybody thinks we need to spend more money on roads, but Correct. how the funds should come from is the governor would like to do it through the existing gas tax to take mm -hmm. it up a little bit more, cut some other taxes. When you were in office, the gas tax was on the books, but you didn't use that. You used the sales tax. Why you increased it a half a cent to do roads and some other things. But why did, did you why did you pick the sales tax? Because some lawmakers would like to do that now. Why did you find the sales tax better than the gas tax in this case? At or did that you? time, the sales tax in Tennessee was right at the bottom. It was very minimal, and I asked the legislature for a full one cent increase in the state sales tax. The Democrats would only give me one half a cent increase, but they did give a cent, and we used it. Believe me, we used it. It was so necessary. You mentioned the kindergarten program. Today, would you think that should be extended to have a, a sort of a mandatory pre-K program to start the education in, in four-year-olds instead of five-year-olds? I'm not ready to announce that I would be supportive of a mandatory pre-K program. I think pre-K at that level ought to be a matter of choice parentally. Um, one thing that happened back in your race in 1970, not only was it a surprise that you won the primary, but that you won the general election and that you beat a, a prominent Democrat named John J. Hooker. You were quite rivals. That was a pretty heated campaign. But you became the best of friends over the years. You were on this station as political analysts for a good number of years. And you continued to be great friends right up until the time he died. Uh, is there a lesson there for people in politics today that, that you can be adversaries but still be friends? Oh, I completely agree with that. Uh, politics is one thing. Personal relations certainly are another. I became a close friend of John Jay's. I loved the guy. He was brilliant in so many ways. He had peculiarities that set him apart, <laughs> no question. But he was brilliant, and he was a devoted friend to me. So it was a very fine relationship. And you miss it him. It should be practiced by more. You miss him. I do, every day. I see spots where I could look up and see him walking occasionally in our neighborhood. and. Uh, I miss it. Another thing that happened while you were governor was the creation of the State Board of Regents for governance of the, the Regent schools across the state, the non-University of Tennessee. Uh, so now there's been a separate board by the governor set up for all those. He thinks that's better in terms of getting our graduation rates up to the, his drive to 55 to get it up to at least 55 percent. The idea at the time it, the Regents was set up along with I think the, the State uh, uh, Higher Education Commission was to get rid of the rivalries between the different schools as they went up to the legislature to, to fight over money, literally, about these things. Are you concerned with these new boards that we may get back in that direction again? I think change is inevitable and most often it's healthy. We've come a long way in higher education. I believe Governor Haslam will go down as one of the principal architects of more successful higher education. I admire his programs, and I think he's doing a beautiful job for the people of Tennessee at this time. Governor, you turn 90 this year on July the 1st. You look terrific. 
you. How do you do it? Well, that they they say there are three stages in life: there's youth, there's middle age, and there's you're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the looking good stage. Thank you very much. What keeps you busy and occupied these days? Chasing my wife mainly. I have a beautiful bride at home, and I've had her for 66, 66 years. Do you have a bucket list? <laughs> what, what's on you? What's on your bucket list? What do you have left to do? Skydive? Uh, <laughs> thought about that, but I'm going to leave that to George H. W. Bush. I don't know. I think I'll just continue down life's pathway and if another little children's book comes to mind I'd like to think I could help do it. Any place special you want to visit or go back maybe someplace you've never been before or someplace you've been before you'd like to go one more time? Well I, I just think that's too broad a, a, a question. I I'm very grateful for all the trips we've had but I'm very happy to be at home. Um, as we close out, uh, here's the here's a picture of that book that you've written. Again, I, I'm not sure people can find it at the bookstores because it's presently sold out. But I, I have a feeling if it was that good a popular seller, it may be back in stores again at least by the holiday season. Well, we'd be happy to print some more, but it's been well accepted, and uh, I'm so pleased that uh, it's what it is. Did you ever think you'd come to the day where you'd be looking at being 90 years old? No, I actually did not, Pat. It's quite an experience in a sense to be approaching that point in life, but I'm just taking it one day at a time, trying to give back wherever I can, and uh, thanking the good Lord for all his mercies. Governor, as we close out today, I brought something down that I have kept uh, since I got it when I was a rookie reporter back covering the Capitol. I think it was your last uh, uh, Christmas party at the mansion in 1974. You gave all of us in the, in the press corps a state seal made out of wood. Looks like it was painted uh, very, very beautiful, very nice. I have kept it in all the offices, in all the places I've worked over the years. And your business card, your signed business card is also there as well. So I wanted to show you that so you'd know that and, and to thank you for that and thank you as well for your service to the state and your service to the country because you remember the greatest generation you served in the Second World War. Thank you, Pat. It's a pleasure an honor to be here and I'm just very grateful for all your kindness. Thank you sir. Appreciate thank you coming you. on the show. Thank you. And thank you for joining us this week on Inside Politics. Hope you can be back here again for a future show. If you can't get to politics in the meantime go to the News Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. The zoo commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye.